Okay, let's see if we can get through one of these skits. Sketches? Davey, please. Okay, you ready, Kevin? Oh! 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 Uh, okay, do we go again? Uh, there's so many stories from the history of SNL that you could have told what drew you to this one. You know, after spending a week as a guest writer back in 2008, I just couldn't get it out of my head. The exhilaration of the countdown to going live, and I wanted a movie audience to feel what it was like to be in that room. So you just mentioned guest writer back in 2008, so how, how did that experience compare to what you depict in the film? Uh, I mean, uh, by 2008, they kind of had the show figured out, but still, even, you know, up to this day, if you go to a live airing of SNL, you see them painting to the last second, they're hammering nails, they're pinning wigs, they're hemming clothes. Uh, it is a show that comes together at the last second. Uh, the movie Saturday Night shows us, you know, some of the skits don't make it to the air. And that's kind of heartbreaking for one character, Billy Crystal. Everyone will know that name. Um, did you have that experience where you had created sketches or skits that did not make it? I, I brought three sketches to the table read, and one got selected for air, and it did go to air. So I, I, I was one of the lucky ones. What was the most surprising thing to you about this? I mean, a lot of people will know the history of SNL, but a lot of people may not. Um, what surprised you the most uh, in this 90-minute look uh, at the first episode? I mean, when I started reading stories and interviewing people for this film, every story surprised me. The idea that they were laying real brick for home base in the moments leading up to air, the idea that Lauren had to steal a lighting director from a different floor, that they borrowed a sound system from Madison Square Garden, uh, all the way up to Mil Milton Berle pulling out his penis. Like, it, it, every story I heard was more insane than the next. Um, I met a few people afterwards, and they were all like, I wonder how much of it is true. So Jason, how much of this is actually true? A shocking amount is true. And again, you have to understand that these are stories from the months, sur months surrounding opening night. We boiled it all down into a 90-minute experience so the audience could feel what it was like on October 11th, 1975. Jason, you've grown up around some of the personalities that appear in the film. Yeah. Um, you know, what did guys like Danny Ackroyd mean to you in your career? I am a comedy nerd. And watching early Saturday Night Live defined who I am today. Every week I found myself laughing, but also my brain growing on what comedy could be. And it's from seeing everything from Steve Martin in the 1970s to Will Ferrell crawling around like a cat on, uh, on a table, uh, to the Lonely Island guys, the Please Don't Destroy guys. They're always broadening my sense of what comedy can be. Did you feel a sense of like, wonder about how the show has endured for 50 years. I mean, so many generations, so many different personalities. What do you think the ingredient is? I don't think Lauren Michaels has a rear view mirror. I think he only looks out the windshield. He is he, he's not there thinking about self-reverence or what we did last week. He is constantly looking for the way that the world is changing, comedy is changing, and as a result, Saturday Night Live has been fresh and relevant for 50 years. Favorite sketch, favorite performer, you must have tons. Could you give us some of your favorites? You know, I got to see Will Ferrell do the cheerleaders in a 99-seat theater in Los Angeles, and that has always made me feel like I was a freshman and I got to watch this senior go pro. There's never been a television show like this. Okay, but what kind of show is it, Warren? Do you even know what the show is? Did anyone ask Edison what a light bulb was before he harnessed electricity? Who are you in the metaphor? This movie is fun, there's a lot of tension. How are you describing it to people who don't know a single thing about Saturday Night Live? Ooh. I guess like the first thing I go to is it's like the 90, the hour and a half before like yeah. the first episode went mm -hmm. live. It is like sort of the short the of what I tell my friends. The countdown of it all. It's not a biopic of, of like, I don't know, meeting them as teenagers and watching them grow up or like how he met everybody and pulled everyone together. It's like literally just the behind the scenes cacophony of chaos before, uh, you know, the first episode. But I, I think I would just tell people that it's really fun. You don't have to know a lot about Saturday Night Live to watch and enjoy this movie. It's so funny. It's so gripping. The score is amazing. The cast, these guys are just phenomenal. And yeah. it's really, it's a really great time in the theater. Um, what was the preparation like uh, for the three of you to play your real life characters? I talked to Rosie on the phone, which was so cool. Like, I feel like just hearing her voice and hearing the way she talked about the lead up to that first show really gave me like a clue into 
how to play it. And I think she's just really confident and cool and funny and smart. And it's fun to play. I would talk to myself a lot as Dan. Like, I record it. If I ever was like, oh, I'm really, I like, I'm, I'm in the zone right now. Let's, mm -hmm. let's capture yeah. this. Yeah, yeah, get yeah, this, yeah, get yeah. this, get this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get it, yeah. get it, get it. And then I'd listen to it on set and try to be like, and then I'd be like, oh, I wasn't, this is awful. <laughs> <laughs> and then I would, and then I'd shoot. <laughs> and action, then, yep. <laughs> Camera, light. And then I walk oh. in, yeah. <laughs> I, I focused a lot of, you know, I, I got to read a lot of books that were very abundant with information about the lead up to the first season, how, Lorne met all of the writers and actors and a lot of real quotes from the people involved. That was crazy helpful and a lot of, you know, whatever few interviews he had to get the cadence and um, accent of his voice and, you know, photographs for his facial mannerisms, etc. But, um, yeah, just really focusing on the first season and nothing more past that because these characters didn't know what happens after the first episode. So you don't have to. Did the three of you get a chance to go and visit a live taping of SNL to kind of see that chaos in real life? We did. What was that like? We did. Lauren was really generous and invited us out. It was really uh, special. We were in New York, going to be shooting regardless outside of 30 Rock for just a couple days. And he invited us to the Josh Brolin episode. And it's so great to be in the room and actually see people moving the sets and just the energy. Everyone is like, oh my God, this is a taping of Saturday Night Live. Like we were about to make a movie of it and we we're nervous for that reason. But to then get to actually be in that real space and watch the actors behind the stages walk up in front of the cameras. And it's really like, oh wow, this is Saturday Night Live. It was really special. Did the three of you think maybe you'd like to host? I think we all would. I think it would be yeah. fun. As a group. As a group. As a band. <laughs> Only the We're three of us. We're a musical guest. As yes. a musical guest. We're a cappella, actually. The three of us. Yeah. I'll take it. I'll, take, I'll do the musical guest. Cover band? Then. I'll come up with something. Cover band, what's yeah. Your, what's, your, what's your song? What's your We're doing the, song? We do the, What's New Pussycat. Oh. Yeah. Love that. By Tom Jones. <laughs> Um, favorite sketch, I mean, SNL's <laughs> generations. Um, I grew up in the 90s, so it was, for me, Wayne's World, but mm. for the three of you. Oh, yeah, I love Wayne's World. I loved Wayne's World as a kid. Um, yeah, that's, oh, my God, I haven't talked to, like, Dana Carvey, like, at all. Um, you guys, step it up. I... Sorry, like, Dana Carvey. Hey, John. Wait, sorry, a favorite sketch? <laughs> yeah, or, or act, or... Or, genera uh, you know or cast, what? generation. Yeah. I yeah. was just thinking of the one where they're doing, like, acupuncture, but then <laughs> they start, like, gushing blood. <laughs> Do you remember that? I don't. It's recent. That one just came to mind. I'm doing a new favorite sketch every time we There's talk. There's a great one with Will Ferrell. Um, it's an Amy Poehler, Seth Meyers. They're doing, like... It's like a 4th of July... A conference meeting in some office and everyone has like you know American mugs or American ties and Will Ferrell walks in in a American Speedo and that's all he's wearing and he goes to get coffee and he bends over and his ass is in Amy Poehler's face. It's hilarious. My name is Lorne Michaels. I'm the producer of Saturday Night. The whole night? Yeah, the whole night. Chevy Chase, Gilda Radner, Dan Ayika. How the f*** do you pronounce this? Ackroyd. 